So now joining me to discuss this, to give a perspective from the government, perhaps, is Marco Longhi, Conservative MP for Dudley North. Thank you very much indeed. You just heard the immigration lawyer there outlining some of the challenges uh, your government is going to to face with this bill. Firstly, let's look towards tomorrow. It's going to be a contentious day in the House of Commons looking at this bill, but I presumably it will go through pretty pain free. Uh, well, I hope it will, Emily, of course, and I will be backing the government 100% on this. Uh, any measure that we can take to stop this awful trade in human misery uh, and, and, and will be something that I cannot see many, many MPs from the Conservative side wanting to oppose. It will be, again, of course, the Labour Party and the SNP and the Lib Dems who will want to oppose it, as they have done every single time, like they do with the Rwanda bill, like they did with the judicial review bill that gave just illegal immigrants an extra bite of the cherry in the courts, just so blocking up all of the courts. Um, so all of these things uh, will need to be put in place to stop this horrible illegal trade. So I did agree with some of the things that Harjab was mentioning a few moments ago. What, what I do not agree uh, with him is the fact that he chose to completely ignore the fact that uh, things like the Rwanda bill have a huge deterrence effect. So once there's a very strong message that goes out there that if you come to this country illegally, one way or another, you will be removed, people stop making the attempt to come but over. Ma that's Marco, what happened to... in Greece and that's what happened in Australia. Sorry to interrupt, but the problem is you say that the Rwanda policy would have a deter deterrent effect. But we, we haven't seen that because the flight has not been able to take off. I mean, we had the almost farcical situation of a flight almost being uh, taking off and then uh, legal action prevented it from doing so. So people up and down the country are feeling a bit bemused, a bit frustrated that the government talks a good game, but nothing seems to happen. How will this bill change that? Oh, well, I'm on their side. Let me be absolutely clear about that. I I'm in the sort of territory which is uh, seeing is believing because I've been here before just as the rest of the country has. So I would be one of those who would like to advocate us coming out of the ECHR altogether because it is that particular aspect that yeah. these lawyers, such as Harjap maybe, uh, keep on using to stop the United Kingdom government from implementing its own legislation. Um, Number 10, Rishi Sunak, uh, he has said that he believes he can do this without exiting the ECHR. Personally, I'd have preferred to have done a copy and paste job and said, let's copy all the good things that the ECHR can, uh, can do for any country and then surgically remove those elements that do not work for us, those elements mm. that these lefty lawyers like to abuse and keep on uh, effectively supporting this illegal trade in, in, in human beings. Marco, the problem is, like it or, or not, there are many people in this country who do think this bill is heartless, cruel, inhumane. They think of potentially unaccompanied children making that perilous journey and then being detained and immediately deported. You've got the Archbishop of York coming out, perhaps predictably, but even so, coming out and saying it's it's cruelty without purpose. You've got hundreds of charities, unions, legal groups, etc., etc., all saying that this bill is cruel and heartless. What do you say to those people? Because they are, you know, members of the British public, just like Conservative voters may well be. Uh, what do you say to them? OK, I'll say two things to them. The first thing I said, come to a constituency just like mine. Come and do a surgery with me. Sit next to me and sit in front of the young mum with a couple of kids, probably pregnant, who is having to sofa surf and cannot get any social housing because we are full. There is a reason why we are using hotels is because all ordinary housing has been taken up. We are full to the hilt. And, and, and soon, what are we going to do when we run out of hotels? So that's the first thing. I'd like to, you know, charity begins at home. We need to look after our own people first. The second point is, when we, uh, you know, the, 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 when you interview people uh, in Calais, they talk about the United Kingdom being El Dorado. We are a huge magnet 
if you can remove that magnet, if what you are saying is come to this country illegally, you will be removed, you prevent people from, you deter people from taking that dangerous, perilous journey in the first place. We've heard and we've seen about people actually dying, drowning, it's awful in the channel. I'll tell you what we don't hear about is we don't hear about all the harm and the death people come to just trying to get to Calais in the first place. Just think of people trying to cross halfway across Africa, Eritrea. We don't think of those people who are dying and coming to harm that way. So we need to find solutions in country. We cannot be facilitating people coming to the United Kingdom because all we're doing is, A, we're aiding and abetting the people smugglers business model, but then we are actually uh, trying to incentivize people to undertake a very, very perilous journey. So I think it's actually a kind policy to implement the Rwanda plan. It's a kind policy to try and establish something that effectively deters mm -hmm. them from coming to harm in the first place. And I'd like to just come back to the point around deterrence. You, you are right, we've not seen Rwanda implemented to its fullest extent, but when it was announced, and when all of us believed it was going to be implemented, mm. you didn't have a single crossing for the nearly three weeks. Nearly three weeks. It's when they realized that we couldn't implement it that they started again. So I know it's anecdotal evidence, but it is nonetheless evidence. And it's evidence that's backed up by what we saw in Greece yeah. and in Australia. Well, what we do know is that the government certainly needs to get this one right, as uh, Rishi Sunak, of course, has made this well, his, my job depends on one it. of his major, major pledges. So we've got to get this sorted one way or another. Thank you very much indeed, Marco Longy, Conservative MP for Dudley North, joining us.